Nigeria, a country facing widespread violence. This week, on the fifth anniversary of the Zaria massacre, many Muslims are still struggling for their rights. The massacre took place in Zaria, Kaduna State in 2015. After a brutal attack by the Nigerian army, at least 348 civilians were killed. That's according to official tally. And 347 bodies were secretly buried. Welcome to Africa Today. I'm your host, Mubarak Kenya. In this episode, we look at the massacre, asking whether those responsible have been held accountable after five years. Apart from that, we delve into Nigeria's quest to end police brutality as the country continues suffering from terror attacks by Takfiri terrorists. Stay tuned. <laughs> Zaria Massacre. Those killed in Zaria during the notable human rights violation in mid-December 2015 were mostly members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria. Top Shia cleric Sheikh Ibrahim Saksaki was arrested along with his wife Moali Mazina, and many are blaming Saudi Arabia for funding the massacre. The victims were unarmed protesters and human rights organizations have asserted that the violent crackdown, which continued for three days, was carried out without any provocation. A commission of inquiry inside Nigeria also called for prosecution of all those involved in the killings. Yet, years later, justice is yet to be served. Our first guest is Mr. Masoud Shajare, human rights campaigner at the Islamic Human Rights Commission. Mr. Shajare, welcome to our program. On the fifth anniversary of the massacre, how much do we know about what actually happened on that day? Well, part of the uh, truth have come out already, even in their own investigation, which was set up uh, almost a year after the massacre. It was a uh, number of things came up. One was the fact that, uh, according to them, um, over 400 people were massacred, but we've got the actual figure is just under a thousand. And they also admitted that they have uh, dig mass graves, and many people have been buried in those mass graves. Thank you, Mr. Shajare, for that. Now, in the studio, we are also joined by Mr. Hussein Abdullahi, a member of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, who will elaborate to us on the situation. Hello, Mr. Abdullahi, and uh, welcome to our program. Now, for a start, uh, can you tell us exactly what is the situation of uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki and the, his wife, who've been incarcerated now for almost, uh, actually, five years? Yes, the situation is still uh, worse. That is, they, uh, they were in a um, uh, worse health condition because there is no appropriate medical attention given to them. And uh, for the Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki, recent analysis or recent uh, investigation reveals that uh, he has uh, about 55 uh, b uh, foreign body shrapnels, bullet oh. shrapnels in his body. Uh, Not removed yet, yeah. Yes, there, none has been removed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he complained of uh, some pain from his head downwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was said that uh, there must be, they must be uh, removed before he can have uh, his mm -hmm. health been uh, improved. Now, thank you, Mr. Abdullahi, for that uh, elaboration. And stay tuned for more. The details of the massacre of hundreds of men, women, and children by soldiers in Zaria are gruesome. Some were injured and burned alive, and the bodies of those killed were left littered in the streets. The arrest and prosecution of the military officers involved in the crackdown is part of the movement's quest for justice, which is yet to materialize. Let us not forget, five working days a week, uh, Nigerian Islamic movement and its supporters come in the street in Abuja and other cities, uh, you know, every single working days. And they've been shot at, they have been gassed, they have been uh, killed, they have been arrested, they have been tortured, but it hasn't stopped. The Islamic Movement of Nigeria has been a target of the Nigerian government's heavy-handed crackdown from the get-go. The members' peaceful protests are suppressed by military forces as the Nigerian government has banned them as terrorists and detained their leader. I just hope that 
we will continue to protest until they let us have contact with them, not show us pictures or give statements in press conferences. They should let us see them. If they don't let us see them, then we don't know that if they're healthy or not. We just know what they tell us. So um, hopefully the protests are peaceful and that we're not attacking anybody. We're just peacefully protesting that we want to see them and we want to make sure that they're alive. And they're alive and they're getting treatment. And until they allow us to see them, we're not going to trust whatever is it that they say. Back to Mr. Abdullahi. A court, uh, a Nigerian court actually, in Kaduna has ordered the release of Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki, but the government is adamant on continuing to detain him. Is the judiciary really independent in Nigeria? Uh, well, we cannot say yes, because if they're independent, the, the order given must have been complied with. But uh, it seems that they were not independent. Yeah. And um, uh, we have seen a, lo a lot of things where the court has given an order and mm -hmm. it was not being complied by the, the government. Yes, it's ignored by the government. So we cannot say they, we cannot say they are defendant, although we are expecting justice from them in the court. Thank you. Now, the Islamic movement in Nigeria has demanded the freedom of their leader through protests staged across Nigeria, including protests in the capital Abuja. Defying the ban, the Islamic movement is alive and resolute in its demand for the freedom of Sheikh Zakzaki. The Muslim leader is indeed an emblem of resistance against injustice in the Islamic world today. Uh, I don't think uh, the power of the Islamic movement of Nigeria and indeed their commitment could be destroyed by these tactics. If anything, um, Islamic movement in Nigeria is now more, um, uh, more prominent. And indeed, uh, many more people in Nigeria see them as a legitimate opposition against corruption, against uh, this sort of dictatorship. And, uh, you know, they actually have become more, uh, people have become more supportive towards them. Thank you, Mr. Shajare, for that. Now, uh, Mr. Abdullahi, many members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria are still missing. I mean, since the massacre in Zari in 2015 and uh, throughout the years. Now, what is their fate, actually? Do you know, is there any investigation going on? Are there efforts to, you know, find them? Well, uh, in fact, we don't have any news, any yeah. information about them, because we cannot investigate. Though we thought that, we are thinking that they were in some uh, detention facilities in mm -hmm. some uh, uh, army mm -hmm. barracks, but yes. we don't have uh, categorically uh, an information on that. And is there a way you can follow up uh, through government agencies? No, there's none. Mm -hmm. There's none, but we hope later. Thank you for that, and stay tuned for more. In the fifth anniversary of the crimes, those who lost their loved ones are still far from witnessing justice. Zaria has remained an epicenter for the government attempt to disrupt the movement's religious practices. Even peaceful protests are met harshly and trigger massive crackdown. The loss of lives, meanwhile, has been a source of concern not just for the victims' Muslim brothers across the world, but also human rights organizations. This is while there are reports that the Saudi monarchy has been behind the massive crackdown on the movement. In order to promote Wahhabi doctrine, Riyadh is known to fund Salafist initiatives across the Muslim world and beyond. There was a WikiLeaks uh, document that showed that the Saudi embassies were putting pressure on Nigeria uh, to tackle uh, the ever-growing popularity of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, but also the uh, officials, including the uh, NBS, the Prince, have actually said that we have uh, tackled uh, 
uh, Iran's influence in uh, uh, Africa and Nigeria. Uh, and uh, it's very clear uh, that uh, they are involved, they are financing these massacres. Now, back to the studio with our, our guest, uh, Mr. Hussein Abdullahi, a member of the Islamic movement in Nigeria. Now, Mr. Abdullahi, uh, do you think that uh, foreign entities or governments are involved, actually, in the persecution of members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria? Yes, uh, they were really involved, directly and indirectly. Okay. The first evidence of their involvement was that immediately after the carnage, yeah. there was um, uh, some information yeah. that we had that from one uh, newspaper, American Times, mm -hmm. that the uh, 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 crown prince uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia has said that they have reduced the influence of Iran in Nigeria yeah. by uh, by, by attacking the Islamic movement. This but is one of the uh, examples of the involvement of foreign entities, yes. Mm. And also recently there were some reports that there were some um, uh, software that was sold to Nigerian government mm -hmm. whereby they can easily track the calls of people. From and which company this software is? From which company? Um, I'm not very sure about it. Or from it. which country or state? Unfortunately, I cannot remember that. Because mm -hmm. there are reports that uh, an Israeli company has sold okay. some uh, spy software to the Nigerian government. Yes, exactly. It's, it's yeah. the same report. It's mm -hmm. the same report. Yeah. Okay. So another thing also is that um, uh, there is congratulation made by mm -hmm. the same person, that is the prince uh, of the Saudi prince Arabia. Salman. Yes, Prince Salman. He said that he is uh, very is congratulating the Nigerian government that they have made some war against terrorism mm -hmm. by the time they uh, attack the Islamic movement. So this and the many other examples were evidences that indicates that there were involvement of uh, foreign entities. Another yeah. thing, uh, again, is the silence mm -hmm. of the uh, main media. For example, the BBC, yeah. the British Broadcasting Corporation. In fact, when something less than that happened, they normally broadcast it immediately. Yeah. But this one, they don't uh, broadcast given it. They it a blackout. Yes. Yeah. So this one, and another thing is that there are a lot of things that happen and they intervene. Yeah. For example, the bell, the, the bell of uh, uh, Sambo Dasuki, yeah. that is a, a, a security advisor to the uh, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, they, they just inter intervene and he was released. Yeah. And uh, this is an indication that their silence is an approval of what has been done to yeah. Islamic movement. So these are some of the examples. Thanks for that. Now, the Islamic movement in Nigeria simply wants the government to do the right thing. The Nigerian government and the military target the Islamic movement while senseless violence and insecurity caused by the likes of Boko Haram remain to be addressed. If a few years after, you could see by 2010, 2011, when the bombings and the attacks started, you know, there was this... Uh, I would say, very slow reaction to understanding how deep a threat this was. And then you see by 2013, 2014, the attacks got really, really massive. And it blew on, on our faces when, you know, there was that, that Chibok incident when, you know, uh, young girls were, over 200 girls were taken, you know, from school. So if you see wh why, the go why the government, uh, why, why the government started building capacity, acquiring weapons, which they hadn't done for many years, and weapons that actually fit into the theater or, uh, and the threat that yeah. they face, you, uh, you could see that they, they, they started making gains. Farmers are beheaded, schools are attacked, and bandits raid people's homes. The Islamic movement in Nigeria argues that the reason for the failure to address takfiri militancy or terrorism is the government's dysfunctional system. The military forces appear to be only capable of suppressing peaceful dissent rather than taking on actual criminals. So are the protests effective? Well, it's extremely effective. I mean, you give me another place around the world uh, that's five years uh, with all these brutality, still people come out, still stand up. People have, you know, given members of their family, not one or two, 
Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Masood Shajare of the Islamic Human Rights Commission in London. Now, back to you, Mr. Abdullahi. Now, uh, Sheikh Zakzaki has been away, imprisoned for five years now. Now, how is the Islamic movement uh, coping with his absence? Uh, is it still continuing with its activities? Uh, yes, uh, although it is uh, disheartening, yeah. the loss of the leader of that kind. However, before uh, he told us that we should continue with what we are doing. Yeah. And even before that, he has trained us that not only all things we come from him. We have yeah. to have our initiatives. Yeah. So a lot, all things, all the programs that we accustom, they are progressing. None has stopped. Oh, Therefore, we cope with, uh, with that. So there's no vacuum. No, there's no vacuum. So. Okay, now, as the Islamic movement in Nigeria, mm -hmm. are you collaborating with other human rights organizations and civil rights groups in demanding or in pressurizing the Nigerian government uh, to release Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki and his wife and also to approve other incidents of persecution of members of the movement? Yes, there are a lot. All um, uh, well-meaning people yeah. must be uh, sided with the oppressed. Yeah. So we have some civil organizations such as the, um, uh, the, the organization headed by Deji okay. Ade and Ju. Oh, okay. uh, that is called uh, Nigerian Concern Groups. Very That's good. Nigerian Concern Group is mm. really, we are really working together. Yeah. They are involved in our activities of Free Zakzaki campaign. Yeah. And uh, most of them were Christians. Most mm -hmm. of them are Christian, That's but toge we are together. Yeah. We are together. And um, uh, there were individuals also mm -hmm. uh, that were normally, you know, uh, uh, they were ag against the operation. Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot. Oh, thank you for that, Mr. Hussein Abdullahi, okay. for joining us today uh, to discuss about the state of the Islamic movement in Nigeria and the continued uh, illegal incarceration of Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki. We are looking forward to his uh, release and that uh, the calls for free Zakzaki uh, will be listened by the Nigerian government and he will be released and go back uh, to serve the people and actually the whole society in Nigeria because I believe he was serving the whole society in Nigeria regardless of uh, religion or sect. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for watching. <laughs>
for their actions. SARS has been known for regularly detaining young male Nigerians illegally and extorting money from their relatives. Public outcry returned to social media when video showing a SARS police officer shooting a young Nigerian in front of a hotel went viral in October 2020. The forces have also been accused of widespread torture, mock executions, and other forms of physical and mental abuses. The reform and reorganization of SARS by the government has not only failed to bring an end to the demonstrations, but also infuriated activists across the country, yielding a new phase of the movement. I think that they have a, a good possibility of, of reform because it's uh, they're strong. They've got uh, a, a hundred years of tradition. The first big demonstrations of uh, Nigerian women were in 1929, and it was against colonial attempts to uh, squeeze uh, market uh, women, of course, dominating the market in Nigeria, and the, and the British uh, uh, colonial government tried to siphon off more money from them. Protests that swept the country in October against police brutality appear to be coming back. Among the protesters, top demands are the release of all those arrested in the peaceful protests. They are also seeking justice and compensation for all those who lost their lives due to police brutality. Well, this uh, protest against police brutality, it's uh, the big place where that's happening is in the United States. But also in Britain, in Europe, in France, there are a lot of protests of police brutality. So, so I think the, the, there is a general uh, groundswell of anger and uh, these women have really pushed to the forefront in protesting uh, pr police brutality in Nigeria. So, so that's a, a good sign, but it's very, they're very angry. Uh, they had the same promises in 2017 and 2018. Uh, so uh, nothing really seemed to have happened. So uh, I don't know if this time uh, they will succeed. Now, the movement that started as an effort to reform police now looks like the beginning of a youth awakening in Nigeria. Women are also playing a key role in the movement as diverse communities unite behind one goal to form the backbone of the NSARS protests. We're here because we believe in what we're fighting for. We are... We are firm to it. And you know, if you listen to our national anthem and our national pledge, we are here to defend our unity. We are fighting for the truth. We are fighting for the labor of our heroes' past. We don't want it to be in vain. I would prefer to die well for my children to have a better tomorrow. The truth is it. There have been lots of graphic footage showing police and army officers shooting and abusing protesters. The activists are now wary of bad governance involving vows to investigate killings while simultaneously discrediting reports of abuses. There are meanwhile efforts underway to organize a network of lawyers to provide free legal support to protesters and victims of police abuses across the country. That's the end of today's program. We hope to see Sheikh Zakzaki and his wife out of prison to join their family, friends, and companions. And we wish peace and prosperity for the people of Nigeria. We're waiting for your opinions and suggestions. Goodbye for now, and God bless you all.